Today, we'll be visiting Birds of Prey Motorsports in Caldwell, Idaho, where my friend Ken Hunter will be doing a seminar on how he packs his dual sport for adventure rides. In the last 10 years, Ken has stacked up an impressive 200,000 miles of adventure, including the Transamerica Trail from Tennessee to the Oregon coast, the Continental Divide Trail, the Pony Express route, at least four trips to Alaska, and he's even fit in some overseas adventure in Thailand. So needless to say, he has some experience packing a bike for adventure. My name is Ken Hunter. I started riding uh, probably 12, 13 years ago. Uh, ran into Tim, not literally. Some place you invited me on that dual sport ride over into Three Forks, Oregon, which I went out and got a bike for. It's rained, it snowed on the tents. We ran in mud all day. And my wife, when I got home, asked me how I liked it. And I told her the next day I was going to go buy a motorcycle. And that was sort of me. And prior to that, I'd ridden on a little XR200, so I never had a road bike. So that was the beginning of it. Over the next 10 years, I did over 200,000 miles. So I've done the Transamerica Trail, if you're familiar with that, Tennessee, the Oregon Coast on Dirt, Continental Divide Trail, did the Pony Express route, did four or five trips to Alaska, I have to sit and count them, uh, and then had a chance to go over and, and ride over in Thailand and Laos on one trip. That was a very unique trip. But what all this stuff has taught me is really packing, going as light as you can. I brought this bike, this is my smallest bike, it's a DRZ 400, so it's relatively a small bike. Uh, believe it or not, each pannier is around 20 to 22 pounds. This bag is under 18, even though it looks bulky, it's one of my bulky stuff, but nothing heavy there. And you got about eight pounds up here in the front. Um, and the 20 pounds or 22 includes the weight of the pannier. So this includes what you see here. One of the things I like to do, this is my tent tent on one side, my tent fly on the other. Tents usually, if it's rainy or there's condens condensation in them, it's just nice to have them separate from the panniers. So they stay up here. I don't care if they're wet. You know, it keeps everything else in my panniers dry. So that's one of the reasons I pack in this, this, this reason. Starting up front, this bag is actually wired into the bike. So I can charge my cell phone in there. I can charge my intercom. Uh, I carry a tablet nowadays, or I used to. I used to always carry books, and you got to sit there in your tent with your headlight trying to read a book. Ta a tablet or notebook is just a great way to go. So I actually keep that. That can also be in. That's in here as well to be charged. Also in here, I carry about six or seven power bars. They're my emergency food if I ever break down somewhere. It's a snack I can do. You know, I can last two or three days with those. So they go here, and every year I throw them away. That's what I hope. I hope I never use them. That's what the intent is. I always carry a flint for fire starters, so I can always start a fire any place I'm at, just those little emergency things like that, what I like to do. This is basically all my riding gear. Um, so it's bulky items, but it's not heavy. Um, one of the things you, I really push everybody to do is, is wear no cottons. Everything is synthetic, because cottons are bulkier, they're harder to, harder to dry once they get wet. So everything in here is easy uh, to wash, easy, to, easy and dry. Um, all the comforts of home, I don't know if you've seen these, this is a little chair. So, if you haven't seen one, yeah, what do you set up for? I'm showing, I'm showing that. That's a little folding chair, it's the greatest little comfort, um, really do. I carry strange things, I carry an umbrella. Uh, been up to Alaska, you get a flat tire, you're sitting there in the rain, just being able to pop that open and stay out of the rain when you're changing your tire, having to work on your bike. It's just a very lightweight, still easy to carry with you. Um, for, like I say, whatever the weather is, this is a nice, scar uh, nice scarf for around your neck to keep yourself warm if you need to. But this is also one that'll hold about a quart of wa water. So in the warm weather, you can just soak this in, in some really cold weather, water, put it on, and it's good for about a two hours. And it's amazing how much colder this will keep you. It just really worked very, very well that way. Uh, I like these over the, the uh, liners you get with most uh, riding pants. This is Polar Tech, so it's a very warm material, but it's also lined with wind shear fabric. So the wind can't go through it. That's always a big issue on a motorcycle. 
super warm. Uh, I've, I've been on rides up in, into Utah where my bike was actually frozen in the ground in the mornings. And you, you know, so you're talking 20, 25 degrees and with these on and an electric jacket, and I'm, I can say very, very comfortable with, with that. Um, but again, this is all synthetic fabric. If it gets wet, it dries quick. One of the real keys to it. Yeah, what you're talking is, is the freeze out material. This is in here. So uh, always, you know, this I may not always take with me to, depending on the trip, but the uh, long underwear, I mean, I've gone, uh, ridden all the way to Key West, Florida, uh, on the way back, been in freezing weather. So you, you know, you have to dress for warm weather, you have to be prepared for the cold weather. So, things. Yeah. Yeah, Tim got me hooked on, on a heated jacket. Not a necessity, but it is, it is nice from the point of view that you're not stopping taking off a layer, adding a layer all the time, so you can, it's a lot easier to adjust the heat. Pair of shoes. I packed this like I was going, so this is uh, all this stuff. Okay. This, really cold, what they use for snowmobiling. So it's a headgear, thin on top, so it fits over the helmet very easy, but it's heavy down below your neck. Uh, great addition to stay warm. Uh, collapsible bucket. You do trails like uh, Trans America Trail, you do like a uh, trip to Alaska where you get into a lot of mud, particularly if you're a KLR person, gets in the radiator. I, this is just collapsible, I can fill it up and just rinse the bike off every night, keep the mud out of the radiator, keep it come somewhat clean. So one of those simple little things, takes no space and it's really nice to have. And then tent stakes are in here. So that's basically all this is. So you can see it's mostly bulky stuff. Uh, like I say, weight of the bag and this whole thing's less than 18 pounds. So it's a pretty, pretty light setup uh, to do it. What I've done in this bag, I, I like the soft bags. I got a piece of uh, masonite in the bottom so it won't drape, drape, it won't go over the, the tent on me. So. This side, I always try to keep this handy and carry a first aid kit. If you notice like this, and you'll see this in my sleeping bag, I keep them in loose bags. I do not like, when you're using a pannier or a hard case pannier, I do not like using the compression sacks because they actually take up more room. Uh, you, you Basically, you use the pannier as your compression sack. You just shove things in here and, and get it compressed. This is an air mattress. It's a X-Bed. It's the longest one they have. It's a downfilled air mattress. Got a built-in pump in it. Uh, it's the most comfortable thing I've run across to sleep on. And then, you can see how it's pretty well squashed. See this, this is my sleeping bag. It's a good, good down bag. Um, but like I said, I keep it in a nice loose bag and then you can just shove it into the bottom of your sleeping, uh, the pan air, use that uh, to, to fill the void. My other bike, I got a Bistrom. It's got the pannier. What do you call those panniers, Tim? The cliff? Yeah, they they kind of cut back in a little bit. So I can shove this right down in and just fill that bottom void. So it really works well on that. I'll just leave that in there. Just saying. Yep. This side will be all my personal gear. So when I go set up my tent for the night. Uh, I always carry a small duffel sack. This has all my toiletries in it, so it always stays in there. Got a towel in there, the things I need that way. It's always gonna go in the tent with me. And then everything else, I, of course, nice long, another good layering shirt. I keep this handy because I wear this, in the, in the morning when it's brisk, I usually put this on under my jacket. Then after that, I'll take it off, put it in here. But everything else will be in color-coded, different colored bags. Shirts, pants, underwear, socks. So I can, if I'm going into my tent, I can just pull out, pull out what I need, put it in this bag, and not have to unload this, the uh, motorcycle every night. I'm doing that. That's shirts. Typically, just they're all like again, they're all. Uh, uh, like this shirt. I carry one collared shirt. 
um, in case I have to go someplace special. Uh, one thing I like to do, I, I'm, I'm famous, I love to stop when I'm on the road and find a church service somewhere. So I can at least put this on, put these pants on. I'm halfway presentable. And it's a great way to meet people too. I mean, I have some, had some, some great experiences that way. Um, all my clean clothes will eventually end in this. So you got a, the black bag is obviously what it is. So when I take it off, that's where they go to. So everything's kind of organized. When I get to a point where I need to wash, I got everything, everything will be in that bag. This is sometimes my washing sack. I've been known to throw clothes in here, tie a strip uh, rope on it, throw it in a stream somewhere, and just let it, the water run through it. It's also a great way to I'll put, it on, to put it on top of my uh, bag back here to dry my clothes. So it's uh, really, if it's a nice sunny day, you can put it there and just a couple hours on one side, flip it over. So uh, that's the intent of that. My Alaska trip, when I did that, I was five weeks, camped every single night. Never was in a motel. I don't think I stayed in a camp here on once or twice and did that. I normally do not cook on my trip. Uh, I enjoy going into a restaurant. I enjoy meeting people. So, we'll, you know, find a little local cafe or something. It's a, just a great way to go and do it. I put this in here because if you do to show you, I still have room enough for this. One pot. This is a multi-purpose, uh, multi-fuel stove. So I can burn gas from the bike. I don't have to carry extra fuel with me. I could just siphon gas off, off the motorcycle to fill the stove when I need to. So I don't have to carry a canister or gas, uh, gas with me or uh, the uh, propane canisters. Water. And, and basically, I mean, I shouldn't go through this as fast, but you can, this is all this from these three items. You look at what about 60 pounds of gear is really what you're looking at. Uh, like I said, I won't bother pulling the tent out, but with a tent with a separate fly, tents on one side, flies on the other. And like I said, the, the purpose for doing that. The other thing on the bike is actually, uh, I talked about the electronics I got here. We highly recommend a spot. I think most of the guys have them here. Uh, personal beacon locator, and it's got a 911 button on it. So if you really get into emergency, and I do a lot of solo rides, so that's really just nice to have. Fortunately, I've never. Yeah, had this is one of the older ones, but I have a button on this that I can go. It goes to my wife's cell phone and her laptop when I was riding, and would tell her that it says off the off for the uh, off the road for the night, so she knew knew I was off and safe for the day. So that would just gave her a little comfort in doing that. One other thing I mentioned, failed to mention, is that with a big, one of the things I really highly recommend is a liner for your sleeping bag. Uh, this is just a light Polar Tech liner. The reason I like this is that one, if you're in your sleeping bag on and off, it gets dirty. If you, this is getting dirty, it's just, you can throw this in the wash anytime on your trip. You don't have to worry about keeping your sleeping bag clean. You get some place where it's extra cold, this will give you about another 10 degrees of warmth. You have some place where it's really hot, I sleep in just this. So it gets pretty versatile. But more than anything else, it's just to help keep the sleeping bag clean and uh, makes it really easy when you do it. Um, other, other than that, I, you know, the standard things here, I carry multi-tool in here for me. Suntan lotion, one of, the, one of my big issues. Uh, something to, you know, all the little things. Comforts of home, little toilet paper, stuff like this. Yeah, always carry a spoon here. Uh, I typically would eat maybe two meals a day on the road but I'll snack a lot, so I'll buy the little cups of fruit or things like that and just carry those with me and I can stop there and have those on the trail. So, doing that. Um, tools, typically when I get a bike, I'll spend probably for the first couple months servicing it, I'll go through the service kit that comes with the bike and then just add to it as I need to or take away, so I have some good tools. So basically on, on this bike, all my tools are on this side and these are nothing more than welding rod tubes. With all, but they're actually got a gasket on them, and this is spare parts, from bailing wire to duct tape to instant glue to all the little things you think you might need. I'm, I, I also carry a lot of hose clamps. Hose clamps are really handy. Keep medium size, small size. If you need a big one, you put two or three together. But like what we did with uh, Bill Whitaker's, yeah. he, he busted his whole front end up on his bike, and we used the hose clamps to kind of clamp it all back together. Um, Eric. Lothgard going down to Nicaragua on a trip, frame broke on his bike. So I took, we took two tire irons, put it on each side of the frame, 
put hose clamps up and down it, and he rode it through two more countries. So just you know, having things that can be versatile and yeah, and a little imagination goes a long way. Uh, this this uh, Tim makes this. I, this is really great. This is in here. I have my air compressor, tire irons, uh, patch kits. Uh, I carry rope just so I can, if I need a clothesline or we need to keep Tim's bike from falling off a cliff, if the rope's really handy. <laughs> <laughs> so this is an additional place to store. The nice part about it, I can still get to this without taking the bag off. So it's re really handy that way. And then the other kind of odd thing I carry, I actually carry a saw with me. And I did this. Uh, it's just a, my, my kids bought me this probably 40 years ago. I tear down my snowmobile, but it's just a folding saw. You don't think much of needing something like this, but the, my first time on the uh, Transamerica Trail, uh, they had a tornado go through part of Tennessee, and some of the roads I was on, there was uh, down trees. So instead of having to turn around and stuff, I could just cut some brim, limbs off and work my white bike uh, through the area. So. I don't, that's about it. I, you know, the, the obvious thing is another rear tire tube, tube for the rear tire. I have a tube for the front tire on front, so I carry two tubes.